Brother and Elder Robert, welcome to Conversations. Um, just a f what I want to ask you is, um, you've been a, a pioneer and today an elder statesman in the Church of God Seventh Day. Were you, did you grow up in the faith, in the Christian community, or were you called to Christ later in life? No, my, my parents became members of the Church of God uh, Seventh Day when I was uh, eight years old. They had not been Christians. My father was converted, mm. and be, and uh, he he w had previously he had been raised in a Christian church, a first day Christian church, but he after through his own study mm. he decided that if he if he ever became really serious about his relationship with Christ. He would be. He would keep the Sabbath. Mm, mm, so when he was converted, he uh, just automatically started looking for a Sabbath church. And a, there was a small church in our hometown of about 42 Advent, uh, Seventh-day Adventists. And so the, we attended there uh, for a, a little period of time. And one Sabbath, we came home for lunch, and Mother t told my dad that she wasn't going to go back because. Uh, they emphasized Ellen G. White as a prophetess more than she thought they should. Mm -hmm. And in fact, more than she felt that they exalted Christ. So she didn't go with us, but Dad took, took my brothers and I to the, to the Adventist church mm -hmm. for a few more weeks. But in the meantime, he learned that there was a Seventh-day Church of God, a Church of God Seventh-day mm -hmm. in our hometown. And so the, the next Sabbath, we went to the Church of God, yeah. and uh, my folks, my, of course, my mother went along there, mm. and we attended a few weeks, and finally, one Sabbath, we came home, and, and Dad said, well, boys, I think we found our church. Mm. So they joined the Church of God Seventh Day, and I was, from, from eight years old on, then I mm. became involved mm. in the church, mm. uh, attended the church and, and Sabbath school. Uh, uh, Kenneth H. Freeman was our part-time pastor. He uh, was not there every Sabbath, but he was there on a pretty regular basis. And uh, I, uh, he was a, a very inspirational speaker. Mm. And so it, I got, I've become attracted mm. to the church and committed to the church of God uh, and to the Lord uh, when I, I actually was baptized when I was 17 mm -hmm. in, at, a, at a general conference meeting held in Salem, West Virginia. And uh, I held various offices in the local church, uh, mm -hmm. church treasurer, Sabbath school superintendent, yeah, yeah. <laughs> various things. Mm -hmm. And then I became, uh, when after 1949, when the churches, Salem and Stanbury Church merged, uh, I became our district overseer, I mean district super, district treasurer, okay. district treasurer, and uh, served as that, as a treasurer for about three or four years. Mm. My family then decided to move from West Virginia, our home area, my hometown uh, of Parkersburg, to Denver in 1953. So my wife and my dad and mother and my younger brother made that trip. Mm. And we were engaged in construction. And uh, I was asked, uh, if I would keep an, a, a Sabbath appointment yeah. at a little church out about 90 miles yeah. from Denver. Uh, I, w I was quite reluctant to, to promise to do that. Yeah. But, the, but the superintendent of our district would not take no for an answer. He said, well, you at least go try it out. And that got me involved in the ministry mm. in 1955. 1955. Yes. Uh, and uh, I received my ministerial license in the fall of 1955 and received an invitation to be a full-time pastor the next spring in, at uh, New, New Auburn, Wisconsin. So my wife and I moved then from Denver to 
northwestern Wisconsin, and I pastored that church for five years. Mm, mm, mm. And that's how I got into the ministry, and then later I was uh, asked to serve as the president of the conference in, in 1963 and served, uh, moved back to Denver mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and served there for 24 years mm. before retiring and moving to Texas. And in that time you've also been involved in the early days of the International Ministerial Congress. What yes. are your recollections of those early days? Well, we reorganized what, was, uh, what the church considered to be a, uh, an international ministerial group. They didn't call it a Congress, they just called it a mm -hmm. Council. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, the, United, the ministers from the United States dominated the original organization back in from 1949 until the Ministerial Council was organized in, in 78. Mm -hmm. And uh, I noticed that there was no real opportunity for any participation from the ministers who attended from Mexico or Central America, or sometimes ministers from the Caribbean would come, Jamaica and Trinidad, and they never had a real opportunity to, to have any input. The, the subjects were all chosen by us, and we, we dominated that. And I considered, well, if, if we're going to be an international church, we need to do something about this. The other thing that happened was, uh, uh, that was uh, the cir a circumstance that we had to deal with was the church here in the United States considered all the churches outside the United States as missions. While they had never really developed them as mm -hmm. missions, they were all indigenous. Yeah. And so I considered that we needed to re uh, uh, begin to think in terms of sister congregations, sister churches, rather than mission churches. So I got to conference, in general conference, uh, in 1973, I believe it was, to adopt a, a, a list of resolutions. And one of them was that we no longer would consider our, uh, the churches outside the United States as missions, but as sister churches. And that kind of paved the way then for the organize, organization of the, of the Congress. So I, I also, at that same meeting, presented a, a temporary form of organization for the conference to, uh, for the International Congress. And uh, that was the name that we were uh, working with. And uh, the, con the council, or the conference in session in 1953 adopted the, the plan mm. to organize the Ministerial Congress, the International Congress, and to, uh, of course, consider the, the churches under, uh, as mission, as, uh, as sister churches rather than missions. Mm. And so uh, then we had a meeting, uh, we had a preliminary meeting in uh, El Paso in, in 1971, or, or, or no, it was uh, 1970. Yeah, we had a min we, mm. we actually had a, a, a ministerial council meeting in Monterey, Mexico, under the old uh, outline for, of organization. And uh, again, the United States ministry dominated the meeting. So, uh, when we met in El Paso, then later in the in the seventies, I think it was a, either seventy five or seventy seven, we uh, we or adopted this uh, temporary organization, and then we worked on uh, a, a permanent organization, and uh, in the seventy eight we met in Ma in uh, Juarez, Mexico and adopted the uh, first form of, well, mm -hmm. the, inter the form of the International Congress. And, and there's been very little changes in, in, the ver in the structure. It has improved the structure by, uh, by uh, uh, naming regions and regional leaders, which we did not have in the, in the first, but essentially the purpose of, and uh, 
uh, object of the conference or the Council of Congress has not changed. Mm -hmm. It still retains its mm -hmm. original purpose. Mm -hmm. And most of it, the bylaws. Mm -hmm. Now, in your time involved within the Congress, um, you've obviously traveled to various parts of the world. Um, yeah. Do you have any particular memories that stand out from those times when you've engaged in being overseas? Well, the, the, my first trip uh, was to Nigeria in, uh, in 1975. And I was accompanied by Roy Mars at that time. He, he was actually operating, he was, he was raised in the church, was Church of God, mm. uh, born, born and bred and, and throughout, for his whole life. But he was working a little bit on the independent side because some of them had objected to the uh, merger of 1949 in, in 1950 and kind of became independent and mm. Roy was mm. among that group. And so he inherited a mission group called uh, um, Missions Abroad. Okay, yeah. From his uncle. And uh, so, well, I think it was really from his cousin, mm, mm. Uh, which was Charles uh, Adams. Uh, Charles had been uh, kind of a missionary for the church and had organized uh, missions abroad and, mm. and had, but he was operating somewhat independently. Yeah. He, and so when he passed away on a, uh, early in life, uh, he gave that to Roy Mars. Roy Mars then approached me as, because I was also, also acting as president of the conference and director of, of our missions yeah, program. Yeah. He, and he approached me about adopting Mm. the missions abroad and, uh, and incorporating it in, mm. our, in our missions program. So uh, we did that. The, 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 the board of directors approved mm. the, the uh, merger and we made the first trip together to Nigeria in the winter of 1975. And uh, he accompanied me there and kind of introduced me around to the ministry and and but and then we were able to bring the church the churches the missions abroad church and our missions we were able to reunite them they had been reunited but under charles adams ministry he he'd caused he developed a, a, a schism and they were kind of operating independently mm. so we brought them together and uh, we toured many of the churches in southeastern Ni Nigeria. That, that was where the church was largely centered at the time. It has now become much more national in various locations all around mm -hmm. Nigeria. But mm -hmm. at that time, it was pretty much in the southeast corner out of Port Harcourt. Okay. Yeah. And that's where we made our headquarters mm -hmm. while we were visiting there for about 10 days. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so uh, we, th that was how actually, let me, what we did was, I, I liked the name Missions Abroad rather than Missions Department, <laughs> that, which, that was what we had called it uh, the, at the conference office, mission, uh, the Missions mm, Department. Mm. So we adopted the name at, well, along with the uh, incorporation of that program into ours, uh, Missions Abroad. So we've operated as Missions Abroad mm, ever mm. since as our mm, missions mm, program mm. for the General Conference. And your travels within the work of the church also has taken you to other places as well. Yeah, oh yes, yeah. I've traveled. I traveled pretty regularly to Nigeria. Then in 1975, made the first trip to Kenya and uh, brought that uh, group into the, the membership of the, or into the con of Congress of the Church of God in s later. And uh, I've been to, I traveled n numerous times to India, to the Philippines, to South America, mm -hmm. uh, with Colombia and Ecuador. 
and Bra uh, Brazil and uh, to the Caribbean. We had churches in a very uh, lively church, an active church in, in Jamaica, and a, a much smaller church, of course, in, in uh, Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, of course, those are two smaller islands, so we, couldn't, we can't boast of the number of congregations that we could in Jamaica. But uh, yes, I've traveled pretty mm. widely, and I, and I tried to keep a, a, a schedule uh, so that I, I could follow up. And we developed a, kind of a philosophy for missions. We subsidized some of the leadership in, in most of those uh, countries that I've named. And then we uh, started a program to assist them in building churches. And it, we said to them, if you, if you build the walls, put the walls up, and the framing for the roof, we'll buy the uh, galvanized steel for the roof and the windows and help you buy the doors. Mm. Uh, but and uh, pr on the provision that the church that that property is deeded to the local c uh, conference. Yeah. Mm. So mm. Uh, and we prospered uh, quite a bit mm. under that program. So over the years, you would have found a lot of good working relationships across the world as the Congress was growing in developing various projects. Oh yes, I became close friends with. Uh, men with mostly ministers and some members in each of those countries mm. as I would visit them on the, on the mm. various occasions. And uh, uh, I, I uh, traveled quite freely in, those, in the various uh, countries, churches. Uh, I used, in, in Kenya I rented, would rent a car, drive myself, but in India and, and Nigeria, it was impractical to rent. In fact, I'm not sure I could be even rented a car. But in, uh, in the Caribbean and uh, in South America and so on, I would rent a car. And uh, be a, I would always be accompanied by a local, one mm, or two mm, or more local mm, pastors mm, mm, and leaders mm, in the church. So mm. we'd travel quite freely to the various congregations mm, and, mm. and uh, set, have a schedule of, of, of preaching service. If you, um, today looking where the Congress is today, if you had one piece of advice that you'd like to give to the, the brothers who share the vision that you began in, what would be your piece of advice or encouragement to continue in the good work that the Lord began in with you? Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm so pleased with the current leadership and, and the direction that the conference has, that the Congress has uh, adopted, mm -hmm. that, that uh, I, I don't know that I could offer a lot of, mm -hmm. of suggestions, but, but I, I express my pleasure to, in, in the w development of, of the Congress now to, to include so many different churches in, in uh, various countries. Some of the countries that, that, that I would have almost, that I would have presumed would be closed to the development of the Church of God Seventh Day. And uh, especially uh, some of those uh, that, that are dominated by uh, uh, Muslims and uh, other Eastern religions. Mm -hmm. So, God is really blessed. Yeah. I feel much. I feel very gratified about with that aspect of my ministry. Mm -hmm. I feel like that that the Lord somehow gave me the vision for the organization of the Congress, and mm -hmm. and and I'm so pleased with its development. Well, brother. And Elder Colter, it's been wonderful to share with you and to hear your reflections and to know the legacy of what God began in you is continuing today. Yes, so. uh, and I'm gratified with that. I was had the privilege of being uh, uh, 
president of the conference for 24 years. Yeah. 12 two-year terms continuously from 1963 to 1987. Mm. And within that time, we, we have been blessed marvelously to be able to hold the church together while we developed some definite uh, theological, some difficult theological questions. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm. which the, to, to some extent to which the church had never really grappled with prior to this. Uh, the, the church of God was founded on the basis of, uh, of uh, y y that God alone, that's the Father alone, is God the Father. Mm -hmm. And that Christ was not deity. He was the Son of God, but he was inferior to, to the deity of Christ. And that the church, then, then when in the 1920s when Andrew uh, N. Duggar was president of the conference, he, he introduced uh, uh, a, the idea that, that uh, what is it, uh, the, oh, mm. the idea that Jesus is the Son of God, he, he was a created being, but he was inferior to God, but he's above man, between, between God and man, so he had a, an exalted position, but, he, but not, not deity. Well, <clears throat> in 1973, I believe it was, at the ministerial council in uh, Boise, Idaho, I had asked Calvin Burrell to just give a lecture on on the deity of Christ, on the, on the, uh, not the deity of Christ necessarily, but on the person of Christ. Mm. And he, of course, presented the minister of counsel with the concept of the deity of Christ. And that started the, the dialogue then that resulted in the full adoption of Christ, the idea that Christ is not only uh, equal with God, he is eternal with God, and shares the name and character and substance of the Father. And, and I feel so gratified in having taken a, mm. had some, some part oh, I in, some. in yeah. bringing the church to that point. Yeah. Today in the International Ministerial Congress, we begin with saying, identifying ourselves as being Christ-centered. Yes. And that stems from the foundational yeah. work of those pioneering days. Actually, the International Congress adopted the, de the, the doctrine of the deity of Christ before the, the, the mm. national church did here. Mm. Uh, yes. uh, Jerry Griffin, who was uh, at that time directing our ministerial program, there uh, uh, in Denver, uh, uh, ha were, was able to present a clear study to the to the International Congress. Corpus Christi. And and the 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 the, the, the question that was presented to the conference is uh, something to, along the line of begotten. How was Christ begotten? And Jerry presented the idea that, that he was never, he was not begotten as, as though he had a beginning, mm. but he was eternal and he shared the deity of his father and his nature and name and so on. And so the Congress adopted it quite, quite unanimously. Mm, mm, mm. And then you know, we, we came home and the next ministerial council we introduced that thought, and it, we, it, it took a few years for the for the conference to finally uh, agree to the to everything. Mm -hmm.